I mean, especially for our Cornet Project class, I'll be very succinct in speaking of how it is we can, especially in this class, quantify and qualify the quandary uh, in man's religions, uh, different gospels, uh, mixed grace, all the works advocates. And we can notice very quickly, especially we learned about the holiness uh, outside of which holiness a person, no, not even one man will see God. Well, this holiness is in God, as uh, Jude wrote to those set apart in God, that is kept in Christ Jesus. So as Dr. Johnson, I recently collaborated with him and he said, well, how can we talk about self-righteousness and not notice that would also imply self-holiness and, of course, self-faithfulness. Uh, our faithfulness is not the source out from which we're declared right. That's the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. So here, Romans 3.22, I'll move over here. Uh, Romans 3.22, speaking of righteousness of God, it says there's that word dia, that preposition, through Jesus Christ's faithfulness, that also refers to by means of. So it's by the means of Jesus Christ's faithfulness. And I'll make a note here. First of all, out from the faithfulness of Christ, we are justified. And of course, you know that's perfect tense in the text of the parable and the uh, publican, the publican and the Pharisee. And the publican was declared right. Here, the righteousness of God is imputed to us. But notice that righteousness that's imputed to us would not be available were it not by the means of or through Jesus Christ's faithfulness. So Jesus Christ's faithfulness is the very definition and that means by which the righteousness of God is made manifest. Not our faithfulness. That would be self-faithfulness. And then self-righteousness is a subjective we qualify it that's a subjective standard well in hebrews 12 14 the holiness outside of which holiness because this this holiness this particular definitive holiness is in god and jude spoke of those who are set apart having been set apart always being set apart in god that is as ones who have been kept or always being kept in jesus christ so the qualifier is Jesus Christ. So here, the imputed uh, righteousness, a declaration of being right, and then this is our uh, condition before God of holiness, which is all qualified as in God, set apart in God, and kept in Christ Jesus. The conclusion here is 2 Corinthians 5.21, He made Him who knew no sin come to be sin, a sin offering, for example, and I'll write that here. We have a sin offering so that we might come to be the righteousness of God in him. So there's the qualifier. So there is no self, there is no self faithfulness out from which we're justified. Our source of justification is out from the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Paul said, as ones who have noticed that no kind of man is being justified out from any kind of works of any kind of law, except through faithfulness of Jesus Christ. He said, even we ourselves believe simple form of action into Christ Jesus in order that we might be declared right out from his faithfulness, faithfulness of Jesus Christ. So that takes care of the self faithfulness. That's unacceptable. Our faithfulness is not uh, anything close to that of Christ, the standard. See, this is be relative, and I'll show you the downside to that. We'll quantify it. But if, you, if it's relative faithfulness as religion and people who refuse to believe Jesus Christ for everlasting life, they deny that he died for their sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and raised again on the third day according to the scriptures, and that means that resurrection uh, that God, by raising him from the dead, gave that persuasion to every man. They negate that persuasion that would persuade them otherwise and still persuades all men to believe him for everlasting life, believe Jesus Christ for everlasting life. Well, to reject him, this relative faithfulness comes in. And what you now have is there's... Uh, 
no two standards are the same. I've often noticed and observed that no two religious people say the same thing once and not one religious person says the same thing twice. It's all subjective. It's all relative. So when it comes to, for example, thought, word, or deed, it's all relative. So now you have uh, three factors here. So we have thought, word, and deed. So they have three variables now, and I'm not certain what they'll do because you have what a person thinks, then we have what we say and then what we do, and you can't find the means of faithfulness to be absolute in anything that we do as fallen, finite, fallible, mutable men. And then, of course, to set about our own righteousness, well, now that becomes relative, subjective, a relative, uh, subjective righteousness, which means I can make it up as I go, which is what makes religion so fascinating and dynamic. It's always relative, always subjective. What was one of the rules was uh, last uh, in the past is now acceptable. And what was acceptable in the past is now rejected. It, it just always uh, variable. So we have relative righteousness. And again, we're back to thought word, and deed. So they have three variables there, so they can't agree on even what to think because they're, they won't be scripted by the scriptures. They negate persuasion by the gospel of God, the Father of Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 4, 17. They negate persuasion by the Son, John 3, 36. They, false prophets, will not speak the gospel of the grace of God. They speak even before Jesus Christ at the end of the age. They'll stand before him and talk about their wonderful works, and they'll talk about all the things they do, but it'll never be anything that has to do with what God sent Jesus to accomplish. Jesus himself said he came to work the works of the one who sent him. And this is the man, Christ Jesus. He came and worked the works of the one who sent him. So those works are worked. They're accomplished. They're finished. He even said that from the cross. Self-holiness then becomes subjective and relative. And it's relative. Relative holiness. So you can see very quickly the absurdity of it. Uh, really becomes quite distressing when uh, they can't even agree on the civil, ceremonial, or moral, moral laws. They scale that, and that's what our flesh does. If left to ourselves, we would be all doing what we see those who advocate works, those who uh, practice that uh, performance-driven death is what we know it in the Bible to be. It's not a way of life. They deny the way, the truth, and the life. They go about and establish their own righteousness, rejecting the righteousness of God manifested in Christ Jesus. But notice this. This quandary has no solution. When Christ came to call, that is, invite people to come to him, and that through him, by him, they would have access to the Father, that no man comes to the Father except by him. That's good news. And now we have his holiness, his faithfulness, and we have the righteousness of God that has been made manifest by Christ Jesus' faithfulness. So to talk about the righteousness of Christ is to speak demonstrably of his faithfulness. So the Bible both qualifies God's righteousness and quantifies it. Jesus fulfilled all the law, all 613 law codes, in thought, word, and deed. Jesus uh, fulfilled all righteousness in thought, word, and deed. So we have nothing lacking, nothing wanting in Christ Jesus. But this is why the quandary uh, is actually, we step back for a moment, come out of Egypt, if you will, come out of that futility of man's works-based, performance-driven death system and notice how self-evident it is that we have everything, the holiness, the righteousness, and the faithfulness. We're justified out from the faithfulness, the righteousness of God, which is by the means of Jesus Christ's faithfulness imputed to us, and the holiness which is in God, that condition that is nothing about us. We couldn't achieve that condition. 
and that is being kept in Christ Jesus. So we have our condition before God, in God, qualified by Christ Jesus, our righteousness of God imputed, which was by means of the faithfulness of Christ, and we have our justification. And over here we'd have self-holiness, self-righteousness, and self-faithfulness, and none of that's accepted by God. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.